Part fourteen of Shakespeare's Sonnets. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. The Sonnets by William Shakespeare. Part fourteen. Sonnets one thirty one to one forty. One thirty one. Thou art as tyrannous, so as thou art, As those whose beauties proudly make them cruel. For well thou knowest, to my dear doting heart, Thou art the fairest and most precious jewel. Yet in good faith some say that thee behold, Thy face hath not the power to make love groan. To say they err, I dare not be so bold, Although I swear it to myself alone. And to be sure that is not false, I swear, A thousand groans but thinking on thy face, One on another's neck do witness bear, Thy black is fairest in my judgment's place. In nothing art thou black save in thy deeds, And thence this slander, as I think, proceeds. 132. Thine eyes I love, and they as pitying me, Knowing thy heart torment me with disdain, Have put on black and loving mourners be, Looking with pretty ruth upon my pain. And truly not the morning sun of heaven Better becomes the grey cheeks of the east, Nor that full star that ushers in the even, Doth half that glory to the sober west, As those two morning eyes become thy face. O oh, let it then as well beseem thy heart To mourn for me, since mourning doth thee grace, And suit thy pity like in every part. Then will I swear beauty herself is black, And all they foul that thy complexion lack. 133. Beshrew that heart that makes my heart to groan, For that deep wound it gives my friend and me. Is not enough to torture me alone, But slave to slavery my sweetest friend must be. Me from myself thy cruel eye hath taken, And my next self thou harder hast engrossed. Of him myself and thee I am forsaken, A torment thrice threefold thus to be crossed. Prison my heart in thy steel bosom's ward, But then my friend's heart let my poor heart bail, who e'er keeps me, let my heart be his guard. Thou canst not then use rigour in my jail. And yet thou wilt, for I, being pent in thee, perforce am thine, and all that is in me. 134. So, now I have confessed that he is thine, and I myself am mortgaged to thy will. Myself I'll forfeit. So that other mine thou wilt restore to be my comfort still. But thou wilt not, nor he will not be free. For thou art covetous, and he is kind. He learned but surety-like to write for me, Under that bond that him as fast doth bind. The statute of thy beauty thou wilt take, Thou usurer, that putst forth all to use, And sue a friend came debtor for my sake. So him I lose through my unkind abuse. Him have I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet am I not free. 135. Whoever hath her wish, thou hast thy will, And will to boot, and will in overplus. More than enough am I that vexed thee still. To thy sweet will making addition thus. Wilt thou, whose will is large and spacious, Not once vouchsafe to hide my will in thine? Shall will in others seem right gracious, And in my will no fair acceptance shine? The sea all water yet receives rain still, And in abundance addeth to his store. So thou, being rich in will, add to thy will one will of mine to make thy large will more. Let no unkind, no fair beseechers kill, think all but one, and me in that one will. 136. If thy soul check thee that I come so near, 
Swear to thy blind soul that I was thy will, And will, thy soul knows, is admitted there, Thus far for love my love-suit sweet fulfil. Will will fulfil the treasure of thy love, I fill it full with wills, and my will one. In things of great receipt with ease we prove Among a number one is reckoned none. Then in the number let me pass untold, Though in thy store's account I one must be. For nothing hold me, so it please thee hold that nothing me, A something sweet to thee. Make but my name thy love, and love that still, And then thou lovest me, for my name is Will. 137. Thou blind fool, love, what dost thou to mine eyes, That they behold and see not what they see? They know what beauty is, see where it lies, Yet what the best is take the worst to be. If eyes corrupt by over-partial looks Be anchored in the bay where all men ride, Why of eyes' falsehood hast thou forged hooks, Where to the judgment of my heart is tied? Why should my heart think that a several plot, Which my heart knows the wide world's commonplace? Or mine eyes, seeing this, say this is not, To put fair truth upon so foul a face? In things right true my heart and eyes have erred, And to this false plague are they now transferred. 138. When my love swears that she is made of truth, I do believe her, though I know she lies, That she might think me some untutored youth, Unlearned in the world's false subtleties. Thus vainly thinking that she thinks me young, Although she knows my days are past the best, Simply I credit her false speaking tongue, On both sides thus is simple truth suppressed. But wherefore says she not she is unjust? And wherefore say not I that I am old? O oh, love's best habit is in seeming trust, And age in love loves not to have years told. Therefore I lie with her, and she with me, And in our faults by lies we flattered be. 139. O oh, call not me to justify the wrong That thy unkindness lays upon my heart. Wound me not with thine eye, but with thy tongue. Use power with power, and slay me not by art. Tell me thou lovest elsewhere, but in my sight Dear heart, forbear to glance thine eye aside. What needst thou wound with cunning, When thy might is more than my o'erpressed defence can bide? Let me excuse thee. Ah, my love well knows her pretty looks Have been mine enemies, And therefore from my face she turns my foes, That they elsewhere might dart their injuries. Yet do not so. But since I am near slain, kill me outright with looks, and rid my pain. 140. Be wise as thou art cruel, do not press my tongue-tied patience with too much disdain, lest sorrow lend me words, and words express the manner of my pity-wanting pain. If I might teach thee wit, better it were, though not to love, yet love to tell me so. As testy sick men, when their deaths be near, No news but health from their physicians know. For if I should despair, I should grow mad, And in my madness might speak ill of thee. Now this ill-resting world is grown so bad, Mad slanderers by mad ears believed be. That I may not be so, nor thou belied, Bear thine eyes straight, though thy proud heart go wide. End of part 14